Your head might be only 175 centimeters from your feet, but time ticks faster up there by 687 quadrillionths of a second every hour. By the end of your life, your head is a massive 484 billionths of a second older than your toes. And here's another example. Say at 25, you took a job at the top of the Empire State Building. That'd be 8.4 hours a day for 260 days a year for 46 years. You'd have worked a colossal 14.7 millionths of a second longer than the people on the ground. But it's not just height, speed warps time as well. Take a sprinter, a high-speed train, and the fastest car on Earth. If the sprinter ran 100 metres in, say, 9.58 seconds, he'd finish six quadrillionths of a second younger than if he'd stayed in the starting blocks. Jump aboard the Eurostar. By the time you get to Paris, you'll have aged 168 trillionths of a second slower. And if you try to break the land speed record, driving at 1,228 kilometres an hour, then you'd have gained three trillionths of a second. Spend your entire life at that speed and you'll have a whopping two thousandths of a second on everyone else. But to see some really huge effects, you need to go higher up. As well as going over 100 times faster than the Eurostar, the International Space Station is over 415,000 metres above our heads. Every hour in the ISS is a millionth of a second shorter than here on Earth. Spend your entire life up there and you'll be almost a second younger. Proof that science really can slow the ageing process. Janet, I, I want to discuss light to you as well as time, because light being a constant, was that known at the time? Was it so uh, it? It was discovered by Maxwell that, um, that the speed of light drops out of electricity and magnetism. So suddenly there's this huge discovery that electricity and magnetism with these electromagnetic fields are light. If you run at a train, it's coming at you faster than if you run away from a train. But light is not like that. So the fact that it's the same, whether you run towards a light beam or away from a light beam, is actually so strange that everyone thought it was a wrong result. And what Einstein did was say, actually, I think that's right. Everything we see and every measurement we've made and all we know about space is because of light. Yes, more or less. Are there other ripples that we should be looking at? Right, so if we're going to be talking about Einstein, we have to talk about gravitational waves, which is the idea that, that if very massive things were to collide, like two black holes, which is sort of the favorite candidate, that they would cause space to ripple around them, kind of like fish swirling in a pond and the water would ripple. And those waves are literally waves in the shape of space. So if you were standing by these two black holes, you wouldn't be able to see them. And they could collide, and you wouldn't even know it had happened because you couldn't see them. But all of a sudden, you'd be like squeezed and stretched <laughs> as those waves pass through you. And but, they travel at the speed of light. But if, if space is like if, if space squeezes and stretches, do you actually physically feel yourself squeezing and stretching? If it's strong enough, you would. If it's strong enough to like overcome the electrochemical bonds that hold you together. 